time, it is now time for the word of God. And so we're asking you to please stand at this time and receive the shepherd of this house, Pastor Dr. Reverend Brown Britt. Hallelujah. I give myself away. God be upon me and through me. Use me now for your glory, your honor, and your praise. We bind every fault, find in spirit. We cast the work of the enemy out. Loose your word to fall freely in this place. Let your word saturate our hearts. Call us to be obedient to your divine word. We'll give it back to your praise in thy son. Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand and praise you. Take your seat. I do honor the spirit of Christ as the head of my life and thank God for his grace, his mercy, his love towards me. I give him glory, I give him honor, I give him praise. I honor our great leader, Pastor Steve Merrick to the Bishop W. W. Hamilton in his absence. Clap your hands for him. <laughs> love him and appreciate him. And to the Lockhart, the senior assistants, to all the assistant pastors, those that are here and those that are not here, get them a hand, praise. <laughs> to Mother Lanier and her absent, Mother Lanier is still struggling, but she said she's still on the battlefield for the Lord. Mother Lanier, Mother Singleton, Mother McClare, to all our great mothers, to all the missionaries, to all the deacons, the ushers, the musicians. Uh, uh, to the first lady, give her a hand, praise. <laughs> Amen. And to all of our visitors, it's so good to have our visitor here and have Elder Adam and Missionary Adam here. Give them a hand, praise. Uh, Sister T.C. Wilmer here, give her a hand, praise. Amen. And the parents of 
what our football players here. Get them another hand, praise them. <laughs> Amen. I don't want to miss anybody. We mess up when we start. Brother Eric and his friend and everybody that's here, I honor you today. And the precious, Sister Carla Nash is here. Amen. I honor everybody here in Jesus' name. And let's see what the Lord will say to us today. I'm, all, I'm just excited about God and all. I'm going to come back to what we preached on last Sunday, but God is leading me a different way. Amen. This Sunday. Amen. But when I preach again, believe we're going back to God is calling for a steadfast and unmovable. Amen. Life in all of us. Amen. Amen. I'm going to preach that probably next first Sunday. But amen. But there, we have need of this word today from the Lord. A very simple word, but a word that will help the body of Christ. I may know that we all need help. Amen. amen. Psalms 51, verse 1 through 13. In Galatians, the sixth chapter, verse 1 and 2. Psalms 51. Psalm of David. David said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou might be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. David said, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thy desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. David said, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bone which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. God, after you do all of that, then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Galatians 6 Verse 1 and 2, brethren, sisters, if you will, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Let me read that verse again for emphasis. Brethren, sisters, Saints of God, this is what he's talking to the saints. Child of God, if a man, if your brother or sister be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, you that have the spirit of God in you, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Consider thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. May God have a blessing to the readers and hearers of his word. I want to talk to you today about restoration. Restoration. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, God wants 
to heal your brokenness. God wants to heal our brokenness. David was a man after God's own heart. A man that God trusted. A man that God used. And David fell by the wayside. David was broken. And you will learn later, God healed his brokenness. And there's times that when we uh, disappoint God, and I know you all have a category uh, and a level of, of sin, but sin is sin. Whether it be what they call that little small white lie, whether it be gossiping, whether it be bike biting, whether it be adultery, fornication, lying, sin is sin. Man has put sin in, in category. But God said, no sin shall enter the kingdom of God. So, Sister Dick is when we that are child of God, when we fall, we uh, hurt God. But not only do we hurt God, there's others around us that are hurt. And then we are the worst ones on ourselves. But the Bible says we have an advocate with the Father. We have Jesus and tell Father have mercy upon them. God is a God of restoration. If nothing is seen in the Old Testament, you see God a Continually, a temple, a, a temple, continually to restore Israel back to Him. Yeah. He will restore Israel. Israel go back out and mess up. He restore them again. Yeah. He'll go back out and mess up, and He'll restore them again. Right. They'll go back out, and He'll mess up, and He will restore them again. He's a God of restoration. God help me preach here today. We see in the New Testament that that, that that is the purpose of Jesus dying on the cross and rising from the dead uh, to restore what sin has stolen and what mankind has lost. We lost fellowship with God. So Jesus came, suffered, and died, was buried, and rose again that you and I may have a right to the tree of life. My sisters, my brothers, the, the ministry of restoration is, is committed to the body of Christ. Uh, this vile ministry, hear me if you will, this vile ministry is far too important to be entrusted to one particular group or to just one individual within the church. So he gives the entire community of faith the responsibility of restoration. Pastors uh, may neglect it. Deacons may ignore it. The church, somebody shout out the church. The church, however, must practice the ministry of mending broken sisters 
and brother. The church, shout out, I'm the church. We must practice. We are the one to bring healing to our sisters and brothers' brokenness. They're already broke. They're already hurting. Glory to God. May I talk to the church today? I want to talk to the church today. The church doesn't hold someone arrow or sin over their head. Tell me, who do you die for? God help me preach today. It was Jesus who shared his precious blood that Wendell, Adam, and I may have a right to the tree of life. So who do you die for? The church is supposed to be like Jesus. And I put that word in there, supposed to be like Jesus. Because, you know, you, there are church folks and then there are saints. There are church folks and there are saints. And there is a big difference, people of God. If we're to be like Jesus, we put our arms around our sisters and brothers and we love on them, we love them back to Christ. But if we are just church folks from the pulpit to the back door, we put our mouth on them, we put our foot on them. That's church folks. That's church folks. When I can sit up and talk about Deacon Jones, I'm a church folk. But when I can go to him and help him and nurture him back, I'm a saint. And that is, and you're the only one, you're the only one know where you are in Christ Jesus. So if you find yourself uh, talking because someone has fallen, the Bible says, you could be the next one. I want to talk to the church. I'm not talking to church folks today. I want to talk to the church. So I think sometimes we get this thing mixed up. Glory to the Lamb of God. Ah, oh, help me today. Church folks are those who think themselves to be better than God. Can I say it again? I ain't going to preach long today. Church folks are those who think themselves to be better than God. The Bible, the, the Bible tells us in Hebrews 8 and 12, for, this is God. For I will be merciful to, the, to their unrighteousness. And their sin and their iniquity will I remember no more. God forgives us. He puts our sin in the sea of forgetfulness and he remembers it no more. Church folks are better than God. Church folks. Because whatever mistake you make, church folks will hold it against you when God has forgiven you, put it in the sea of forgiveness, and he remembers it no more. Oh, I'm going somewhere today. Hallelujah. Why do we feel like we're better than God? Oh, I hear you. I ain't God. I ain't perfect. No, you're not perfect. None of you are perfect. None of us are perfect. But Jesus has given us his spirit. And it's all this is, and I may get back over, but it's with love and kindness have I drawn thee. Not by me putting my feet on you. Not by me putting my mouth on you. Glory to the Lamb of God. 
Why do we tend to sit in judgment of one another? It is the word of God that judges the world. Why do we sit in judgment? It's okay if, if you sin because no one know about your sin. But if someone else sin, you can't or you refuse to forgive and bring restoration. That spirit is not of God. It's not of God. It's not of God. My sisters and brother, when, 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 when we fail to forgive, hear me now, hear me now. When we fail to forgive, we hurt ourselves. We hold ourselves in bondage. You, 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 you don't, you're not holding me in bondage because you don't forgive me. You're holding yourself in bondage. You're the one that has the problem. God has forgiven uh, Ella Adam and Ella Adam is worshiping and praising God and you can't forgive Ella Adam. Oh, you don't know too much about him, but you don't want to hear him. You don't want to see him. <laughs> Glory to God. I want to talk to the church today. Only one going to get mad is the church folks. I'm serious. Forgiveness is an easy word to say, but a difficult action to carry out. Forgiveness is an easy word to say, but a difficult action to carry out. However, saying something, the Bible, which is the holy and divine word of God, repeatedly speaks of forgiveness. So we cannot any longer afford to ignore its importance. Nor can we overemphasize the significance and the impact of forgiveness. My sister, my brother, hear me today in the spirit, if you will. Being unforgiven is, a, is, a, is as much more nature a natural result from human beings. Being unforgiving is a much more natural result for human beings. But it is far more damaging as well. An unforgiving spirit does not just sprout up within us overnight. An unforgiving spirit does not sp just sprout up Overnight. It involves a series of responses or lack of responses and therefore takes time to develop. Charles Stanley, in his book, The Gift of Forgiveness, identifies, I'm not going to go through them all, 10 stages that, 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 that he experienced, has taught him about people with unforgiving spirit. People with an unforgiving spirit has, is, has also experienced hurt. Most of us get hurt in the church. The same psalm that said I was wounded in the house of my friends. And, and, and we can't or don't want to or refuse to get over the hurt. But Jesus, he is the one that paid the ultimate price. And he is not willing that any should perish. But all of us will come to repentance. An unforgiving spirit starts when we are hurt or wrong in some way. 
It doesn't matter if the hurt came from a physical, emotional, or variable source. It doesn't matter if the hurt happened when we were children, teenagers, or while we are grown adults. It, we got hurt some kind of way, and it makes us feel rejected. Sometimes we don't recognize it right away. But that is what happened when others wrong us. We, we can feel hurt. We can feel pain. We can feel abandonment. We can feel embarrassment. We can feel hatred. And even when, 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 when someone, someone uh, 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 fall from grace, uh, they are not rejoicing because they fell from God. You all don't realize the torment. Uh, all y'all been perfect all your life. But you don't realize the torment that a backslider go through. I'll say it again. Some of y'all been in church all your life and never disappointed God. Oh, yeah, because that's the way you act sometimes. But the person that, ha- that, that can own up to it and man up or woman up to it, uh, uh, they go through purity hell. And then they come to the city of refuge. They come to the safe place. The church is supposed to be the safe place. I'm not only talking about this building, but they, 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 they come to Brother Jerry, and, and Brother Jerry don't receive him, and he's the church. You do more damage as the body of Christ when you reject a soul. I'm almost finished. I'm not going to make no move. Brother is Preachers in your attire, missionaries, deaconesses in your fine attire, ushers, deacons, saints of God. If a brother or sister, brethren and mean all the saints, a child of God willfully, Be overtaken, get that word you read, overtaken in a fault, in sin. Beat them down. Talk about them. Gossip about them. That's not what the word of God say. If a brother or sister be overtaken in a fault, ye which have the Holy Ghost. Ye which are saved and sanctified, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, gentleness. Why, Brother Britt? Because, because I got my mouth on Mother Welch. I could be the next one to fall. I, I think what we, for, we forget, Deacon Brown, uh, and I say this all the time, I think we forget that we have an enemy of our soul. And Mother Griffin, until we take our last breath, y'all hear me if you don't hear anything else I say. Until we take our last breath, that enemy, which is the devil, which comes to steal, to kill, and destroy, he's going to always try to get you to turn your back on God. I never forget it. I never forget it. Uh, Bishop told me when he was beside and Mother Watts was there, Mother uh, 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 McLaughlin bed, she kept like she was arguing. She kept saying, I am the church. Can you imagine the enemy was saying, you don't have to do this, but she said, I'm the church. Can you, can you imagine the enemy was on her deathbed? We're trying to get her, but she said, but I'm the church. But she said, you got to look close because she said, but, 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 but I am the church. The church, I, I'm different. I, I can't act that way. 
I, I, I can't go that way. I, I can't treat anybody any way I want to treat them because I am the church. Somebody shout, I'm the church. God, help me today. I'm closing. I'm closing, for real. This is so good. This is so good. Here, let me get to my text for you. Y'all say he didn't even, he just talked about one text. So, here's Bishop David. Once was a shepherd boy. David was supposed to be at war. David decided, I'm going to send my man. I'm going to go. I'm going to stay home. When you, and I don't mind, that's where I was going. I don't mind is a devil workshop. So, David, El Sal, sitting at home, mind his own business. And enemies started talking to him. Go on up to the rooftop. Look at the beauty of what God has done. Your men are out the war. You're supposed to be there, but go on to the, that's what he do, go on to the, to the rooftop and just look at the sun and the sky and hear the birds and, and it's gone out. So David hears the voice of the enemy. He goes to the rooftop. Uh, David, David was supposed to be at war, but he could have been saying, God has the splendor of your glory. Oh, you are wonderful, God. Looks down and, devil, you're a liar. Looks back, the devil, right? And he said, wow. Whew. There's a beautiful woman on her rooftop taking a bath. David sent for her. Y'all know the story I'm going to. But David was a man after God's own heart. David, before he got to the 51, was saying, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. David was the one, I trust the Lord. But the enemy... Calls him to willfully sin. Sometimes we willfully sin. See, we always, we want to say a mistake. I made a mistake. Some people make mistakes. Some people willfully sin. And the enemy have his way with us. But even in that, David, God did not throw David away. Touch David hard. You know, y'all know the whole story. David lied and all this kind of stuff and end up killing Uriah and all this kind of stuff. I'm not going there. But God did not kill David. He did not throw David away. I had a dream this morning, and I'm going to share it with you. I don't know. I was with a group of people, and I was testifying to them. And I said, my bishop, pastor, came in, shook his hand. I said, this is the man that could have killed me. This was not in my message, but it was a dream this morning. This is the man that could have killed me. But because he was a child of God, and because he was saved, he did not kill me. Deacon Jones, I went all the way back in my dream, that spirit. I'm going to share this and I'm going to be finished. Bishop and 
Deacon Jones took me. Well, I took them. We went fishing. Talked to me. Tried to save me. I think by the time we ended up talking, we all had tears in our eyes. I had tears because I didn't think they understood me. And they had tears in their eyes like, this boy just don't get it. I can tell you something. When the enemy gets a hold of you, it takes God. It takes God. John, the enemy wanted to destroy me, and he tried. The enemy wanted to destroy me, and he tried. You got men in this state will tell you, Bishop Hamilton said, I'm just waiting for Ron to get himself together. The drawer wall, we said, my husband is a young man, best friend. Bishop waited, he prayed until God got a hold of me. But he could have killed me. I'm gonna say this, share this. We had a lot of talks. But the last time he brought me back, he said, Run. I have gotten rid of men that have done less than what you did. So you have one more chance with me. Then I'm going to take my hands off of you. I don't know, Sister Cameron, why the Lord revealed that to me this morning to share. Because there's nowhere in my notes that they can think about it. But I want to share with the church. Before, and I don't speak this all about, but just for an example, before the Lord come, any one of us can fall. Any one of us can fall. But it's not for us to bury them. Jesus did not give up on you. And we are not to give up on one another. That's the gist of the message. We are to carry a spirit of restoration with us at all time. That's what Galatian scripture was saying. And I, I, I know we're in the flesh sometimes, and, 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 and I know that sometimes we tend to uh, want to hear and talk, but that's not being Christ-like. Choose if you're going to be Christ-like or you're going to be church folks. I, I, I want to be Christ-like. It's with love and kindness have I drawn thee. And you cannot draw somebody when your foot is always on their neck. When your mouth is always talking negative. You cannot draw. But church, church, there's a scripture in the Bible. It's all in my notes. Be, say, I believe it's Colossians. Be quick to forgive. Be quick to forgive. And forgive means I forgive you like you didn't even do the act. Let me say it one more time and I'm going to pray. Forgive me. Forgiveness me is just the person, like the person did not commit the act. When you truly forgive. And I know, so I'm saying, but pastor, that's hard. Now, if you got Jesus on the inside of you, you got to kill the flesh. The flesh don't want to forgive. The flesh don't want to let go. The flesh want to keep mess going. But as a child of God, Put your arms around me. Brother Britt, you can make it. Brother Britt, you're going to make it. I got you. Cover me. 
until I'm strong enough. That's the church. That's the church. Somebody shout, I am the church. I'm ready. I'm done. We're standing. I'm done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's the church. That's the church. The church that have the love of God pound on the inside of them. Loves cover a multitude of. Love does not behave itself, behave itself unseemly. If you got the love of God, you're not going to talk. You're going to pray. You're going to help. Well, I feel this thing. 